everybody, this is Fiji Logic, and today we're going to be having a little look at ESPN Extreme Games for the PlayStation. And this game is made by Sony Computer Entertainment, and it came out in 1995, making it a very early game for the console. Now, only after doing a little research did I find out that this game actually has a sequel. Two, in fact. But they aren't called ESPN Extreme Games 2 and 3, no, 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 that'd be too simple. In fact, they are called 2 Extreme, spelled like this. And 3 Extreme, also spelt like this, so you know, all rad and extreme like. Now, I'm not 100% sure of the reasons for this, as you know how it is Wikipedia says one thing and another article says another, but I think the gist of it really is a contract with ESPN expired and they couldn't use this title anymore. The best way to describe ESPN Extreme Games is as a brawler slash racer, not too dissimilar to Road Rash. In actual fact, if you replace the motorbikes in Road Rash for skateboards and rollerblades, the games really are very similar. But that's a good thing. The combat during the races is what keeps this game interesting, and along with managing your stamina bar through each stage, it adds a lot of depth and replayability to a game which would otherwise get boring pretty quick. I don't really need to explain the objectives here, I mean it's a racing game, you want to come first whatever it takes. You pick from four different vehicles, we've got skateboards, street luges, push bikes and rollerblades. You pick one of five areas to race in and then you get on with it. I mean, the vehicles all seem to handle much the same, but I guess at the very least that does mean you can switch freely between them and it eliminates any advantages one may have over the other. The one big thing to focus on in this game though is the stamina bar. Whenever you accelerate, it starts to drain. You can ease off the accelerator when you're going downhill though and tuck your character in to keep their speed up and the bar will also go back up, and it's quite important that you do this. You're going to be punching and kicking your way through the pack in every race, and your opponent's sure as hell aren't going to let you get away with that without a fight. So with a full stamina bar you can usually tank you know, two, maybe three hits, uh, but if you're running on empty, one hit is going to put you flat on your ass. So learning when to throttle it and when to hold back is the key to doing well in this game. Let's check out the competition. I mean, your opponents are brutal in every race. I mean, even if you feel like you're onto a sure win and you're miles ahead of everyone, you're just wrong. It, that's not the case. They just keep coming, and it doesn't really matter how far or how fast you feel like you're going. Um, they're always going to be able to catch up with you. I don't really want to use the term rubber banding, as I don't really think that's a thing in this game. Uh, but just be aware you're going to be beating up a lot of people just to stay ahead. And even if you feel like you're quite far ahead of everyone, they are going to keep coming at you. They do all seem to go down in one or two hits at least, which is good. I and mean, you certainly do feel maybe a little bit stronger than they are. But if you're fighting through a group, you still need your wits about you. Fortunately, the punch and kick buttons are mapped to the shoulder buttons. I mean, R1 and L1 are for punches. R2 and L2 are for kicks. It's simple, intuitive, and it instantly feels natural. It goes without saying, but ideally you don't want to screw up in a race. And I mean screw up at all, you really want to have as clean a race as you possibly can, because this game doesn't hold your hand in the difficulty department. Now even on easy, I've only won a handful of races. Ever. Now I'll be the first to admit I am a bit crap at racing games, but damn, I really struggled with this one. It never feels like a chore though, I mean the combat is so satisfying and even if you aren't having the greatest race on earth, you can instead focus on at least going through as many of these gates on the course as you can. These give you money, which can be used to buy better vehicles. There are also some gates that trigger hazards or events on the tracks, which is a nice touch. It's nothing too fancy or elaborate, but it is pretty cool nonetheless. Now one thing I've really got to mention is the cutscenes. Now there's more than a few games on the PlayStation that use live actors for this, and with varying levels of success. In my opinion, they're usually pretty cringy, regardless what game they're in. And in this game, well, you decide. San Francisco. You'll finish at the Golden Gate Bridge, but the key here is the tunnel. Once you hit it, go all out, because you're almost home. Who is she? I mean, well, whoever she is, she introduces each stage, and she rates your results at the end of the race. She's hard to please. Anything less than third, and you're going to be told off, basically. It's pretty funny, and for the first few times, it is quite a unique inclusion. I guess you may have already come to the conclusion that I think it's a decent game, and you'll be right. ESPN Extreme Games still holds up, and it's a lot of fun. It's got a great just pick-up-and-play factor, and it's not without fault. I mean, the collision detection is kind of wonky from time to time, especially against the scenery. Now, if you hit a wall, and that... A flat wall, should I say, really, and that does happen sometimes. You grind to a complete stop, as you probably expect. 
but after that your character then kind of slides against the wall until they find some track that they can go forwards on again. Now this is probably because there's no reverse, and whereas that might seem like an odd thing to complain about, usually after all the time it takes to fix this kind of problem, you're last, or at least heading that way. There really isn't any way you're going to recover from this kind of thing happening. Now I know that complaint can swiftly be responded to with get good scrub or something like that, but how about this one? Unless you're playing championship mode, you cannot use the memory card to save your game. This means all that money you earn for earning better gear in exhibition mode, resets every time you start the game up. I honestly can't work that one out, and it feels like quite a big oversight, unless most people actually really do just play the championship mode. In the grand scheme of things though, it is fairly inconsequential, and if it really bothers you that much, there's a money code anyway. In conclusion, I'd say ESPN Extreme Games was good back then, and it still has plenty of charm and playability now. It's not going to impress the graphics or amount of content, but what is there is surprisingly addictive, and would I recommend you play this one? Absolutely. I did a playthrough of each stage a while ago, so if you want to check out an unedited race or two, there's a link to the first one I did in the description. Anyway, that pretty much wraps it up for this one, so as always guys, thank you so very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.